Here's a topic that is often not discussed or talked about or avoided because it is considered to be a taboo subject in most cultures, the menstrual cycle. In this video, we're going to talk about the menstrual cycle, try to understand why it occurs and try to understand the major players or the structures involved in the cycle and the reason or the importance of this cycle. Now, the menstrual cycle is something that on an average lasts around 28 days in most women. This could be 21 days in some women or even 30 days in some women. But three major players are involved in regulating this menstrual cycle. They are the ovaries, the hormones of both the ovaries and the pituitary, the anterior pituitary to be specific, and the uterus. It's called a cycle because like I said, it lasts about 28 days and it keeps repeating from the beginning when a woman starts to menstruate, which is known as the menarche, all the way till menopause when this finally stops occurring in the woman's body. This is at around 13 years of age approximately and this is approximately around 45 to 50 years of age. Now, the entire reason this menstrual cycle occurs is for implantation of the embryo. So, the uterus has three layers. The innermost is known as the endometrium. The middle one is known as the myometrium. And the outermost is known as the perimetrium. And it is in this endometrium that the embryo gets implanted. So, it needs to be thickened basically and to make that layer thicken you need a different hormones to be involved we'll talk about that in just a while but the entire reason why this menstrual cycle even occurs is to make the uterus prepared for implantation of the pregnancy each ovary either left or the right ovary it releases one egg or oocyte per month and the egg is, is caught by the fimbriae and stays in the fallopian tube in anticipation of fertilization. If fertilization does occur when the sperm enter the uterus and move past and fuse with the egg here, then the zygote is formed and the zygote slowly moves down to the uterus where it is finally implanted in the endometrium. For this implantation to occur, the endometrium must be thick and must be supplied with a lot of blood vessels. That is the entire reason why this menstrual cycle occurs, to keep or to make the uterus ready for this implantation. If pregnancy does not occur, if implantation does not occur, then this endometrium is shed, is released out by the process of menstruation. This is what we get when women get their periods. Now, this entire menstrual cycle is not just about the uterus. Like I said, it involves the ovaries as well. So, we'll take a look at the menstrual, the ovarian and the hormone cycle that happens every 28 days in women in the form of a graph. So, we'll be plotting the time in, in days on the x-axis and the y-axis is going to have the changes that happen in the ovary, in the hormone levels and to the endometrial layer. First, we'll start off with the ovarian cycle and what happens in the ovaries. Now, the ovarian cycle can be split into two phases, the follicular phase and the luteal phase. The follicular phase begins from the first day of the previous menstrual period and it extends till 14, approximately 14 days, which is when ovulation occurs. The luteal phase is from this ovulation until the first day of the next period. This is around 28 days. So, what happens during the follicular phase is that inside the ovaries, there are thousands of ovarian follicles. From those ovarian follicles, around 50 or 60, they begin to develop. But it's a race against time because by the end of 14 days, there is only just one follicle that has fully developed, has fully matured. And it is that developed, mature ovarian follicle that is ruptured and releases the egg by the process known as ovulation. And once the ovulation occurs, the degenerating follicle then forms the corpus luteum. That's why this is known as the follicular phase because we have a developing ovarian follicle. And that's why this is known as the luteal phase because of the formation of the corpus luteum. Now for this ovarian cycle to take place, it needs the help of several hormones. 
There are the pituitary hormones which are the luteinizing hormone LH and the follicle stimulating hormone FSH. These two hormones are secreted by the anterior pituitary in response to the secretion of GnRH which is the gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. What these hormones do is that they come to the ovary and they stimulate the ovaries to secrete estrogen and progesterone as well. We'll talk about progesterone in just a while. So what happens is during the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle, the levels of LH and FSH steadily begin to increase in the woman's body and that causes ultimately a rise in the estrogen levels in the body as well because these hormones are needed for estrogen to be produced, right? So these hormones aid in the maturation and the development of this ovarian follicle and the secretion of these hormones LH and FSH is mediated by the feedback loop of the levels of estrogen initially the feedback loop is negative which means that more levels of estrogen causes a decrease in these hormones being secreted but during ovulation time the feedback loop actually becomes positive which means that as more and more estrogen is secreted during the ovulatory phase there is a surge in the level of luteinizing hormone which causes the rupture of the ovarian follicle and the release of the egg at around the 14th day which is known as ovulation so for ovulation to occur you need a peak in the estrogen levels and the surge in the luteinizing level as well that is caused because of the positive feedback loop between estrogen and luteinizing hormone. Now once ovulation happens, the levels of estrogen, luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone, they begin to decrease. But at the same time, there is an increase in the levels of progesterone. Now this is what happens in the ovaries. What about the uterus? Well, the uterus, like I mentioned, the endometrium needs to thicken in anticipation of pregnancy, right? So let's assume that this is the endometrial layer. The uterine cycle is split into three parts. It is split into menses or menstruation which lasts around one two three or five days and after that comes the proliferative phase and after ovulation comes the secretory phase so this menses phase is actually the shedding of the endometrial layer in the absence of pregnancy so for the first three to five days the endometrial layer that has developed in the previous month is shed and once that happens the level of estrogen begins to increase, right? Correspondingly, because this follicle is developing here, the estrogen level begins to increase and estrogen directly affects this endometrial layer. It causes the endometrial layer to thicken and estrogen also causes the blood supply to increase to the endometrial layer, all preparing the uterus for the implantation of the embryo. So estrogen is involved in the proliferative phase of the uterine cycle. It makes the endometrial layer layer quite thick in anticipation of pregnancy. Once ovulation occurs and the level of estrogen begins to go down, the level of progesterone begins to increase because it is the corpus luteum that begins to secrete progesterone. Now the high level of progesterone during the secretory phase which is why it is known as the secretory phase because the corpus luteum secretes progesterone. This progesterone is needed to maintain this endometrial layer. So progesterone's job is to maintain this layer to make sure that it is not shed so that the embryo can be implanted. Now this is quite crucial because once it is released, the egg, it is viable only for around 24 hours after which the chances of it getting fertilized decreases. But even then, the endometrial layer is maintained for another 14 to 15 days during the secretory phase because of the high levels of progesterone. Now, once the corpus luteum completely degenerates, it can no longer secrete enough progesterone to maintain this endometrial layer. So as the progesterone level goes down, the endometrial layer is shed by the process of menstruation. So that is when, when the progesterone levels go down, that is when this ovarian cycle or the, this uterine cycle ends and the next cycle begins. So this is how the ovaries, the uterus 
and the ovarian and the pituitary hormones work in conjunction to make sure that the follicle the ovarian follicle matures and ovulation occurs the egg is released at the same time they all work to make sure that the uterine layer is thick and ready for implantation and when implantation does not occur in an effort to conserve energy in an effort to conserve resources because this layer is no longer needed right because if implantation is not occurring this thick endometrial lining is not needed that is shed in the beginning of the next cycle as menstruation or when you get your period so this is why the absence of a period is usually a sign of pregnancy which means that the endometrial layer is not shed so if pregnancy does occur the corpus luteum is not degenerated instead it keeps secreting progesterone for a while until the placenta forms after which the placenta begins to secrete high levels of progesterone which is needed to maintain this endometrial layer this highly thickened endometrial layer is needed throughout the pregnancy which is why placenta produces progesterone all that in an effort to make sure that that pregnancy that has happened is carried to full term and a healthy baby is delivered